Hi, I'm Jason Bright, CTO and founder of Media Beacon. And today we're going to be talking about uh, the Media Beacon API. Um, we're going to be talking about the different tools uh, that you can use, uh, the API environment, uh, REST, HTML5, server, how to debug it, and you also have a cool link, uh, which will be at the end of the presentation as well, so that you can go download the API and take a look at it and run it. Um, all of it is going to be written in uh, JavaScript, uh, and we've unified all of the different uh, tools under a single deb debugging environment. Um, we're going to go through how that works and should be fun. All right, let's take a look. So first of all, uh, the API documentation is on the website. That's the link that you uh, have been asked to go to. Um, and let's jump into Media Beacon. Uh, close the window. And Media Beacon has a API that is available as REST, as client side, and as server side. So if you look at the client side, I'm currently in Chrome and I'm just logged in Media Beacon. And if I wish to interface with our client side JavaScript, I can go in and I can open the uh, developer tools. And here's our happy developer tools. This is an unmodified version of Chrome. Uh, nothing special, nothing interesting. Okay, so I can go in and I can say um, uh, MBAPI dot. And what, what has happened is that Media Beacon has bound all of its API to a DOM object. So in the web page, uh, there's an object that you can refer to any frame that has loaded Media Beacon has access to our API. And you can say things like uh, create new asset, uh, custom badges, uh, you can fire drag and drop events, you can attach to the event model, you can execute random JavaScript, um, you can get the username. That looks fun, let's do that. Okay, Boop. and it says I'm logged in as root right now. And I can say MB API log me out. Okay, and if I execute that, it's going to log me out. And you'll see that it now has the login window and I can log back in. So that is from the set of commands from the MB API under client JavaScript API. And you can see all of the things that I can do and you can browse them by category or by index. And we can just go and I wanna see L for log out. What did I just do? And it says, here's log out. It's log out of Media Beacon. Yay. <laughs> but think about all the cool things you can do with that. So if you have a remote system that has a shared widget on the page, you can start executing this and you can use a standard debug interface that you use in Chrome, which is really, really cool. Um, now, Let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, we'll have, sorry, we'll have other demos uh, of example projects going forward. Uh, so this is just the overview of the API and uh, there should be a getting started soon and overview of some, you know, tools and fun things you can build. Um, so that gives you access to the client side, right? Now, on the server side, we unified it so you have a workflow JavaScript API. Now, this is on the server side. Now, the client side is executing as the user that's logged in. So that's root. Now, or for me, uh, Jason, uh, for uh, people who are going to be executing co commands that need to have more access, that need to be persistent, that need to be scheduled on a periodic basis and be uh, able to access server conf configuration and tools and all that, um, they can run the same kind of thing but on the server. So let's actually take a look at that. So I'm going to go to one of them that I have canned and I have a cute little uh, drawing thing that I did. So I'll show you my, my uh, JIT visualizer using the JIT.org and you can draw fun stuff. And this is, uh, this is a client side and server side app. I'm going to show you how it works, uh, but it needs data in a particular format to work. So <clears throat> when you're talking about interfacing with Media Beacon, um, you're going to need to pull data in different formats from the server. And it's more appropriate for the server to do it because obviously the server is going to be able to do a thousand commands without sending a lot of data over the web. So 
it will compose the information in a way that we can use and then it will send it to the client so how does it how does it do that let's take a look at the foreground i'm going to open the widget preferences and i'm going to go to the client side javascript now this is client and the client side javascript basically i cut and paste off of thejet.org which has these great gra graphic utilities and then I do a Ajax request to a thing called WF icicle data. And what that is, is a workflow on the server written in JavaScript that executes as the server and does tons of work and then processes it to, down to only the stuff you need and then sends it to you. Now, why is that cool? The reason that's so cool is because otherwise we do a million calls because it has to do like a hundred searches and has to do all this work. Now, would you really want to have a hundred searches with a hundred latency return requests um, and have it cost like 20 minutes of time before you can build the graph or the server can get at that data in milliseconds where you'd take seconds and you can get a result clicky clicky and you saw how it drew all pretty. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So I'm going to go to, I showed you how to get to the client side. Let's go to workflow. Now you have to be sufficiently privileged for this to work, right? So I have, I have admin privileges and I have API developer privileges on Media Beacon. Now in this window, you'll find that uh, we have a list of all the workflows and we have the JavaScript in the workflow. And I'm rather proud of this section, which I wrote so that I could make the color chart be different colors with hue, saturation and brightness. Um, so I, I think it's very pretty because it's it goes like through different color spectrum. Um, that was uh, something I downloaded off the web. I found that and I thought, oh, that's really cool. And so I was able to get a JavaScript routine, copy and paste it because it's just straight ECMAScript. This is executing in the execution environment on the server, and it allows you to do this without having to learn a new language, learn a new interface, and, and you're able to do it with the same toolkit on the client and the server. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, I enable this workflow. There are assets in Media Beacon. You have to enable them. Um, this workflow is a regular type a permission type or a library type. So permission types run when you permission things, they actually control access. So you can have special JavaScripts for that. You also have libraries where everybody refers to a particular library. And so you have one library um, that uh, is your central routine base and then everything else calls it. That's great. Uh, requires file system access. So if you need direct file system access from this system, um, Media Beacon will schedule it on the core. Uh, so when you have file system access, Media Beacon federates all this. So the JavaScript might be executing in any number of JavaScript engines. But if you ask for file system access, it, it develops a conduit to the core. And if you don't need file system access, it makes it faster if you don't click it. Um, if you do need file system access, there's a little bit of setup and Media Beacon will link to the file system and be able to do things like delete files, move files, blah, 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 that don't exist in the database, right? So that's only if you're going to be touching things that don't exist in the database that you're going to need to manipulate. Like, you know, a file before it's imported, I want to move it around, right? You're obviously not going to be able to do that if you don't have file system access because you can't see it because it's not in the database yet. Okay, then run as a batch bulk edit on current selection. This is an optimization so that instead of fetching each command, it bundles them all together and pounds it into a running JVM so that it doesn't have the startup cost of initializing a little machine. So that's a speed optimization if you're gonna be doing things like bulk edit, right? Um, enable client-side triggering. This enables REST. You have an ID workflow, right? So this is the ID hash, this is the uh, doc ID, doc ID. This, yes, this is the doc ID actually, uh, but it's a UUID uh, for the script to be triggered. Now you can call that uh, as, a, as, a strip, as a script, or then that'll be uniform across all implementations and all installations, or you can actually call it with the prefix WF, and then the name you have here. So WF icicle data is the same as calling BD9171D71F2, blah, blah, blah. So I like that a lot better. 
um, and so I can also open the workflow in a new window if I want to have a big zoomed view so I can edit better. And by the way, this is all editable and it, it uh, auto highlights and completes and all that stuff too. Um, you can set parameters if you want. So the workflow can accept parameters from this console so you can configure. And then here's the big one, cool one, is debug this workflow. I can actually debug this workflow for a group or group user, and I can debug for all users, right? And then this is the magic. You connect to it with this URL. So you have to copy this, and then you open another browser, and then you paste just in standard Chrome. I am now bound to a remote media beacon. It looks like I'm local. It's the same debugger that we just saw um, on the other system, but it it's now actually executing local uh, uh, locally, but calling the remote system. So uh, let's actually run something. I'm going to uh, call that workflow. So I'm going to open another window and I'm going to do that 127 555 and I'm going to go workflow slash icicle data. And right, I'm going to go in and now watch this go. And once it starts, it loads the debugger. Now that's executing our remote system. And so we're bound to that remote session and I can start stepping through that code and I can then jump into and I can see all the variables, right? So I can walk through and I can say, all right, let me step into that one. I'm going to step into get facets and here's the magic. This is executing solar queries. You see it building a query and it's going to execute a for next, uh, a for loop uh, to uh, get all the data. Now this would just kill you if it wasn't done in a, a server context. It would, you could do it on the client, but then you'd be like 4,000 calls later and your network has been spinning away and then you drive it down to a little block of data. So then I can walk through and I can say, all right, you know, what is a facets? And I can see the facets and I can see what the facet list is. There's nothing right now. Uh, what's the search and, uh, you know, what are the arguments? Nothing, you know, so it's great. You're just debugging like you normally debug. No, no big difference. Uh, I can also then uh, fire off. Uh, the results, I can put a breakpoint. So I'm going to do get facets and I'm going to stop there. I'm going to say run. Okay, so now I have it and I can say show me a results and a results has a ton of data. And I can see all of the facets and formats and I can pull back that data and return it. So let's return that data. And now you see that the uh, web browser has redrawn its window. And here's the data I just got. Now, each one of these children is a sub search for me to be can and see how much how many searches you'd have to have every time the word children appears, it's another search. So that was milliseconds uh, of time and you got to debug it. Now again, uh, the API is available right here. And so you can walk through and learn all the cool API stuff. Uh, so that's pretty nifty. Okay, cool. So now we're going to move on to, uh, so that's just a flavor of it. We're going to do some more projects, but lots of cool stuff you can do. So that was data manipulation using JavaScript. And that means you don't have to learn new tools. Now I'm going to do the REST API. And the REST API is a lot easier. Um, and the REST API is actually, believe it or not, JavaScript, right? So if you look at the REST API, and I'm going to jump in, and they're mostly hidden, right? Um, but what I can do is show you like asset ID to path, okay? And I'm going to say, don't save that. I don't need these changes. Here's, we will give you the, the API, the REST API, as source code as well. And so you can see that the REST API is actually a JavaScript and executes as a JavaScript. And because it has a enable client side triggering, it is available at WF slash asset ID to path. And so you can take our REST API and you can say, well, you know, that's 90% of where I want to go, but it's making 8 million calls right here. And so you can change that REST API so that it doesn't have to go that horrible 8 million calls back and forth to the server. You can actually just do it right away, right? So you can do that command like that icicle data I just showed you. That allows you to combine all the calls into one and it's infinitely faster and better than a standard REST interface. 
It's a lot harder for us to write, but a lot easier for you to run and use. Okay, cool. And you can debug it just as you debug everything else. Now, let's go look at one of the ones that we have, which is uh, Flickr REST API. So we're going to jump into Flickr. And here's an example of a REST API that calls Flickr. Now you'll see there's a Flickr uh, API key, right? And I am actually using my, my API on the server to call a remote REST call, which then does functions for me. So here is us calling remote REST functions to get data from a remote system, right? So this is just a basic Flickr API. Um, and I can trigger that by clicking trigger workflow. So it is now running and you can see it's jumped into the bugger and, and this is a REST call that we've created that uh, calls other REST calls, right? That's how the world really works. And I can say, all right, let's go through and step through the whole uh, script and it actually goes and fetches data from REST and so once that's done, you can see that it's actually pulled the data into Media Beacon. And here are all the runs. And in the Flickr API example, um, it's actually done a REST call to a remote Flickr system and has pulled all the data and isolated them to folders. And so that um, block of code is a REST call that called a bunch of REST calls that pulled data back and got metadata and everything for some fun Flickr searches. Okay, and so we have the workflow here, which is the opposite, which is calling the MB REST API. And this is the same process to Media Beacon. And you can see that Media Beacon has the ability to pull data from REST using JavaScript uh, and here's an example, get field is being called here, search is being called here, and those commands are from our API list here. And we see search, and we have get field, and we have a bunch of sample applications that we're going to share with you. So there's a lot more that we can do with all these, and I would go into a lot more depth. We want to keep this sort of short. Um, I hope this was a great introduction. Um, there's a getting started document, and please feel free to contact us um, uh, for more information at uh, info at mediabeacon.com. Um, and feel free to go to our website and browse uh, this list. Hopefully you'll be uh, as impressed with it as I am. And uh, thank you so much for watching.